Well, the latest advancements in medicine benefit patients of all ages, including infants. At only four months old, Kate was diagnosed with a condition that made it difficult for her skull to grow properly. Doctors were able to help Kate with a new minimally invasive approach to cranial surgery. And here with her story, please welcome pediatric plastic surgeon with UT Physicians, Dr. Feng Wen, along with Kate and her parents, Marissa and Sean Medlin. Welcome to the show. Thank Kate you. is okay. absolutely adorable. Tomorrow is her 10 month anniversary. Yes. We are planning our her one month her her one year birthday party right now as we speak. It's Happy and healthy. Yes. But yes. back us up to uh, just a few months ago when you noticed when she was born, you noticed that something seemed a little bit off. Yep. So I'm nursing her, so you know you get a lot of face time and one on one time during yeah. those first couple of weeks. So um, I noticed that her nose was a little crooked, and she also her eyes were different shaped. One was more round, one was more almond. And so I brought it up to our pediatrician at her two-week two check-in, and she referred us to an ENT who kind of checked everything out and said, no, everything's normal. It's just part of the birthing process. Mm. Um, it'll correct over time. So we kind of just let everything go. Well, about four months, our pediatrician was still like, I don't know. It just, it's not getting better. I would prefer that you guys went and saw um, the craniofacial team at UT and just kind of had everything checked out and... We're so glad we did because we didn't know it at the time, but that was the beginning of a process of something that we needed to go through to get her corrected. She is so precious. I love Thank that. You. She's doing the raspberries over here. I love it. <laughs> Your mic is working. Uh, Dr. Wynn, this is one thing that I think is really interesting. It, it's a parent's intuition, right? You were breastfeeding, you noticed something was maybe not right and it wasn't quite sure, you know, is this normal, is it not normal, is it something minor? And luckily those, those checks and balances were in place to then get to refer to you because the diagnosis then came through. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, we're very lucky uh, here at UT that we can see a lot of patients who come through with this diagnosis. So if, if that's on the back of your mind, it's going to be the first thing that you think of. Right. The so, diagnosis, by the way, is craniosynostosis. Turns out it's one in about 2,500. Explain what the diagnosis actually is. Sure. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but craniosynostosis is essentially the fusion of your cranial sutures. Now, what is that? We're born with a skull that is essentially movable. That's how the baby gets through the birth canal. And it's fused with these little uh, areas of fibrous attachments called sutures. They're not supposed to fuse until your 20s, but they can fuse much more earlier, so particularly when you're a baby. So what happens is then the skull becomes misshapen and the brain has nowhere to go. And the brain is unable to develop and unable to grow. So it's really important that that's opened up so that we allow that brain to grow. And so you uh, went through the whole process, mom and dad too, of what's next, right? How do we fix the problem? And I bet that was scary to hear the type of surgery that Kate had to have. Yeah, it got, it, it, things became very real yeah. uh, once we went and saw Dr. Wen. Uh, I'll never forget, you know, he looked at Kate and he said, I'll be right back. And he steps out, he comes back in with a normal skull and then a skull that was uh, like Kate's, uh, that with the deformity on it. And you know, as a parent, you, you, you wanna think that your kids are you know, healthy and there's nothing wrong, but that's, that's, what, that's when things got pretty real for us. And as you mentioned, a, a skull with a different shape, it's not just about a deformation of the skull, it's about altering brain activity mm -hmm. yeah. in the future. Let's talk about the treatment that Kate experienced because I understand she's the first one in Texas. And I think we have some pictures, which by the way, include some scarring. So we're just <laughs> warning our viewers. But Dr. Wynn, explain the process, how it all went down. Sure, just to give you some historical perspective, uh, we've been doing this type of surgery for craniosynostosis for decades. The traditional method is something called a frontal orbital advancement. And what that is, it's essentially taking the skull apart, moving it into various pieces, and reshaping it, putting it back together with little plates and screws. Oh my goodness, so quite a surgery. So it's not a small surgery. But this was different than that process. So this is different. So we utilized a device called a distractor. What that is, think of it as a little car jack. Essentially, it's a device that slowly pushes the bones apart over time. And as you can see there, there's a, that, that little that metal lever, device. That little metal device, and just two turns a day, slowly will push that skull apart. Now that has two advantages. Number one, 
we can do things over a period of time where we don't have to stretch the skin, so that's not our limiting factor. Number two, the amount of surgery and dissection uh, is significantly less, making it much safer and much more of a uh, minimally invasive approach. Quicker recovery, I yeah. assume. And right now, I mean, we're looking at Kate. She's great. I can see barely the scar, but just because her hair is covering it, in, in a year or so, won't even see it, right? Oh, absolutely. And Marissa and Sean, during this process, you were just turning a full crank every day. Is that how it worked? Yep, so we turned it twice a day, um, two, two times each day it's for 25 days. I think is where we ended up at. So, and that was that was pretty intense. I was uh, that, that, that was, yeah. and that was probably harder on us than it was Kate um, you know, to, to do that. But uh, you know, after Dr. Wynn explained the approach to it, it, it totally made sense. Well, a more advanced procedure and good news for parents who may be facing the same situation. Sean, Marissa, Kate, thank you so much for sharing your story, Dr. Yes, Wynn. Thank you. Thanks for all the work that you do. And in the meantime, if you would like more information. You you can visit the UT Physicians website, <laughs> utphysicians.com, or you can call 888-4-UT-DOCS. We'll be right back with more Houston Life. Mm. Nicely done, Kate. I know.